This is The Joe Gaither Show on BamaCentral.com. Good afternoon, Tuscaloosa, Internet World, West Alabama. How are you doing today on this Tuesday? It is the Joe Gaither Show on Bama Central and BamaCentral.com. I'm Joe Gaither. You're the listener, the viewer. You're watching us on YouTube, on Facebook, or Twitter. You're watching or listening to us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or on Amazon. You can always find us the Joe Gaither Show on Bama Central wherever you get your podcasts. And you can subscribe, rate, and review the show right there. We're going to have, hopefully, a good show today. We're going to talk more 8A, Alabama 8A. You can jump into the comments and join us at Joe Gaither 6 on whatever your favorite social media machine is, whether it be uh, Facebook, Twitter, or YouTube. Yesterday on the show, we spent a lot of time talking about the Alabama offense. We talked about Alabama offensive standouts and Alabama needs in the transfer portal and kind of what we saw from Kalen DeBoer's offense. So today, we'll flip to the other side of the football. I just spent uh, about an hour, hour and a half watching the Alabama defense, uh, re-watching A-Day, just kind of focusing in on the Alabama defense, trying to see what I took away from from re-watching it uh so you guys can jump in and join us uh let's go ahead and get it going on the joe gaither show by talking about the alabama defense at 8a this past saturday all right first off uh alabama allowed five straight uh, oh, team crimson they allowed five straight scoring drives before they started to get into the game then they forced what ten out of eleven stops. They only allowed a field goal after the uh, after the early part of the game, and you can say, "Oh yeah, they look so bad." But I think there was a little bit of a schematic advantage the offense uh, had early in the game, uh, at least uh, schemed up by Kalen DeBoer uh, and the defense uh, against the defense. Um, Let's just get out in, in front of it and say, you know, obviously the running backs kind of had a good day against this Alabama defense. And so you started to look at it. The first team defense, as they rolled out, uh, they rolled out with uh, Quandarius Robinson, Tim Smith, Tim Keenan, and Jamarian Latham right up front. And then in the inside linebacker room, you had Deontay Lawson and Justin Jefferson playing with the ones. And then your back end, uh, you kind of uh, figured out the back end by now, but you had Damani Jackson and Xavier Brown playing your cornerback position. You have Malachi Moore, Keon Sab, and Devontae Smith, uh, not Red Morgan, uh, not Tony Mitchell, playing that other safety position. So you look at the starting defense and you look at how it was structured and you say, okay, first off, there's no Jihad Campbell. Oh, uh, no Jihad Campbell throughout the whole entire scrimmage. And there's no Jaheim Otis uh, throughout the entire scrimmage. Coach Kalen DeBoer talking about it after the scrimmage, saying if spring practice had lasted one week longer, the two guys would have probably been back in action and probably would have participated. But that, but they were held out with two very different injuries. So you look at it and you see the running backs. You saw, you know, Jam Miller popped off a big old run, uh, and they kind of they got real success uh, in the in in in, uh, in the running game. And as you're breaking down the film or, uh, you know, our amateur eyes, you see big holes in the inside linebacker room. Deontay Lawson is an absolute beast. And when he's healthy, as he was on Saturday, he had a good day and he was impactful all over the field. Uh, but Justin Jefferson left a lot to be desired. So you immediately noticed, uh, you, you immediately noticed the absence of Jahad Campbell. And Justin Jefferson, we look at his story, we look at where he is on the, on the team. Uh, he's, you know, the second or third most experienced pl uh, player in the inside linebacker room behind Deontay Lawson, Juco transfer from uh, from Mississippi. But he's undersized, and he looked it on sa on Saturday, even against this Alabama offensive line. I mean, yeah, you did have uh, him going up against the starting offensive line, which was, you know, Will Conformby. They had Jaden Roberts. They had J uh, James Brockermeyer, Tyler Booker, and, uh, and Elijah Pritchett from right to left, and so he was going up against those guys. He's just undersized, and he got bullied down the field, and really when he was called to go on stunts and uh, blitz the A-gaps and kind of create some pressure, he was unable to do it. He got washed out of a lot of pressures, uh, and so you looked at the ones and how they struggled early in the game, and it kind of fell. Yeah, you know, I don't like to be pointing blame and blame just and just kind of uh, putting it all on one guy because obviously it's an eleven man effort. But you saw Justin Jefferson in that second inside linebacker position really 
with the ones and the twos. We'll get into the twos in just a minute, uh, leaving a lot to be desired. And so uh, we'll talk about the transfer portal, what Alabama needs to look for in the transfer portal as college football's transfer portal reopened today. Uh, but, yeah, starting off right there, Justin Jefferson uh, struggled in 8A, and that's why you saw Justice Haynes and Jam Miller and Richard Young at points uh, having a lot of success right up the middle uh, and, and running the football. And you heard, look, Kaylin DeBoer talking about missed tackles. Uh, you got a lot of missed tackles early on in the scrimmage, and I think that really and truly – it serves as a sign of the intensity difference. And really kind of, I said it yesterday that I thought A-Day was a little bit of a work, a little bit of a show, a little bit of a kind of a, uh, kind of a, you know, a gimmick to, uh, to get one over on the fans. The offense taking a big old lead, the defense almost coming all the way back. Uh, I think the defense was called, you know, he said it was very vanilla. I think they were a little bit struggling to get into the scrimmage and get into live action, uh, get, get into actually, you know, full tackle like early on in the scrimmage. And that's what led the offense to get off to a good start. But what? What did you see? You noticed a lot of differences. This was our first time getting to see the swarm defense uh, with the Alabama players. We've heard a lot about it from South Alabama. Uh, we've gotten to see you know different versions of it at different colleges through through film. But I, you know, I think it's a it's, it's very encouraging. I thought it was a a very fun way to see the defense make a little bit of a change. Uh, you saw more zone defense out there. Uh, you saw more pressures. Uh, and, and really, I mean, it, you, you have seen Alabama run kind of the four, two, five, uh, different points in the, over the last four, five, six years in nickel packages, but I really enjoyed seeing Jamarian Latham out there playing on one end and you had Quindarius Robinson playing on another. You had two kind of, I mean, look, Alabama has been recruiting stud studs on at the defensive line for a long, long time. Let's get them out there. Yeah, J Tim Keenan had a good day, had a real good day. And Tim Smith, uh, he's been around the program for a long, long time. He's grown into a pretty good player as well. I think that when you get Jihad Campbell back into this defense and you allow them to play more freely and play at max intensity, uh, some of the struggles that you saw on the defensive side of the football uh, at, at 8A might dissipate uh, to a large degree. One thing that, you know, is going to be a huge hurdle for this team is how young they are defensive back. I mean, you do have Malachi Moore, and he's the old man on this team, really. He and Jalen Muro basically uh, serving as team captains, and I wonder if it's going to be Deontay Lawson or Tyler Booker or someone like that serving as a third team captain. Maybe they both serve as team captains. You elevate to a, four, uh, a team of four. But Malachi Moore's the old man back there. But outside of Malachi Moore, you've got a lot of young players. And so you saw Jeremy Bernard. Jeremy Bernard got after it in the passing game. What he saw, he had that one uh, kind of post pattern from Jalen Milrow on the first or second drive. And then he had the uh, crosser on the uh, th third or fourth drive that he took for 52 yards right to the goal line. You said, oh, man, Jeremy Bernard, he looks so good. He's tearing up the Alabama defense. Oh, gosh, the Alabama defense is so bad. But on both of those plays – He's getting the post pattern, a pump fake from Jalen Milrow uh, on Xavier Brown, Alabama's true freshman, who he early enrolled. He, the kid should be having his senior year right now, should be going to prom this coming up weekend. Uh, he's out there against, what, third-year player in, in college, Jeremy Menard, and he's held his own, but, yeah, you're going to give up some. Same thing on the crossing pattern, the 52-yarder with, uh, what, 35, 30-something yards after the catch. Uh, Xavier Brown loses off the line of scrimmage. Uh, Jeremy Nard, you know, give him credit. He's good, he looks like a good player, but he's going up against a child uh, at a day. He wins off the line of scrimmage, and Jalen Milrow gives him a good pass. Uh, he uh, Jeremy Nard kind of veteran moves him. Veteran moves on uh, on Xavier Brown slaps his hands away right uh, right as the ball is kind of coming in and makes an easy catch, and then it's off to the races. And, and while you want to give credit to Jeremy Bernard because he looks real good and you like the chemistry early with, with he and Jalen Milrow, you got to give some grace to Zabian Brown because he is really a kid. A guy should be still in high school, about to be going through graduation. I think high schools are getting out in, what, three or four weeks. So the end of, uh, end of April, 1st of May, he should be going through graduation. Uh, so, so I'm not really worried about, uh, or, or I'm not. I, I struggle finding, uh, finding out how much I should credit Z uh, Jeremy Menard when you're going up against a kid that's got su such little college experience. 
the defensive backfield is very inexperienced. You, uh, you, you saw Damani Jackson, and Damani Jackson stood out to me a, a, a little bit because he made two touchdown saving tackles on that on that big uh, play from Jeremy Bernard. He he made the uh, touchdown saving tackle, and on Jam Miller's big run off the uh, off the left side, he made another touchdown saving tackle. So he played with pretty good effort on the day. But uh, Damani Jackson only had one year of co- of college experience. Uh, Right to no two years of college experience, but he but he redshirted, I thought. Uh, but he didn't really have a great year at Southern Cal last year. Really, you're very inexperienced at the cornerback position, and I think you saw a lot of that. Uh, I think you saw a lot of that at A Day. Uh, but I thought you saw a lot of potential. You saw some Jalen and Bakwe. You, I mean, and, and Zabian outside of those couple of plays, really play uh, those couple of plays that given up by Jeremy Bernard. He, he, I thought he really played well for uh, on the day. So you've got a young defense. You've got a little bit of a problem with your depth at inside linebacker. Justin Jefferson, you're wondering if he's uh, really a three-down linebacker. Oh, I don't mean to hate on the kid, but I think that he's going to be very, very well suited in passing situations where his speed can be an asset. The problem was Alabama's offense, Team White, was trying to get downhill and keep it pretty simple on the, at 8A, as you would want to do. And he struggles in that department. I think he's more uh, proficient getting in the passing game and, and, and covering, you know, covering tight ends down the field uh, in, on third down. And that's where you're going to see him uh, be, you know, contributing contributing more to this team. Uh, so you're wrong on defense. Justin Jefferson, the third down linebacker. Uh, we talked about how do you, I mean, a little bit, how do you like Alabama playing some zone defense? Jalen Miller had some drops, uh, had some, was affected by some drops. But he also had a hard time. I mean, not a, it wasn't a perfect a- accuracy all day long. There were some high passes in the zone. The guys were stretching. And same with Ty Simpson. Uh, the zones were pretty relatively tight. It was a couple of times where you had some busts. I think Jeremy Bernard on his third reception down the field with Ty Simpson was a bust. Uh, Simpson finds him and, and a good pass, good good catch. Uh, but but he was left pretty much wide open. When the zones were uh, – when, when the guys were communicating – I think that it was pretty fun to see, uh, you know, Alabama's athleticism on the back end. You will look at Georgia over the last couple of years, and yeah, Georgia's been running the pattern matching system that Nick Saban basically handed to Kirby Smart. But they also mix in some cover three, some cover two, some cover one, just a little bit to keep the defense uh, offenses honest. And I think it's going to be a little, uh, a lot of fun to see Alabama do the same thing because of the way that Alabama has been recruiting, and it's no real hate on the pattern matching system that coach the, the coach Saban implemented and really designed and came up with. But uh, I, I think it's going to be a lot more simpler for Alabama's defensive backs going forward. And so while they are young, I think you're going to see them play at a, you know, as good a level as they can for, for their experience. Uh, let's keep going. Let's keep going. I talked about missing tackles just a little bit. Uh, we got an issue with inside linebacker. Alabama's got an issue. Uh, let's see. Keon Keeley. Keon Keeley is a guy that everybody's been talking about or uh, really has been excited about since he committed to Alabama two, what, two years ago. He was a five-star in the class of 2023. He didn't play at all last season. Now he's gone under a position change, and he's got his hand in the dirt uh, trying to learn – to be more of a defensive end, and I think it's going to suit him a bit better uh, if he sticks with it. But he was out there with the twos and threes, and it was Keon Keeley jumping off sides on the uh, Drake Patrick interception. So it's very clear that his path to playing time, uh, he's got to overtake Jamarian Latham and probably likely Jaheim Otis the, uh, is still playing at that same position. So, like, He's got a long way, I think, towards playing time. Uh, and while the transfer portal is opening up or opened up earlier today, I, you don't want to see and, – and I, and I don't hope for anybody to go in the transfer portal, but don't be surprised if a guy like Keon Keeley says, oh, this fit, I don't know if, if it's really what I want to be doing. Uh, I, I think he played okay, but I think it was very clear that he's still in developmental stages of this position change. Uh, yeah, like I said, Drake Patrick was the only Alabama player, Alabama defensive player, to get a turnover on the day. It was over ta- overturned by uh, Keon Keeley's offsides penalty – but Drake Kirk, yeah, look, he is an undersized freshman. I mean, again, all these defensive backs are children. All these defensive backs, he, they early enrolled just to get ahead of the game. But they all should be still in high school. Drake Kirkpatrick Jr. up at Gaston, Gaston City, right? Like, 
it's crazy how young these guys are. And so while Alabama was kind of torn up a little bit early in the in the uh, in the scrimmage and gave up a few big plays, overall the defense played fairly well. You got 10 out of the last 11 drives uh, where you got stops. I mean, you, you got stops on all 11 drives. You didn't give up a touchdown, but what, Upton Belafonte kicks a field goal and uh, and, and, and the kid from uh, and the kid from Col- the kid from uh, Chicago misses his field goal. Goodness gracious, Connor Talty. Thank you. That was uh, so. So you had two field goals. Uh, the defense really got into the game and, and played much better after the first four or five drives. And I think a lot of that was due to schematics where the defense was calling more pressures and creating more confusion on the offensive line. Uh, but I think a little bit of it was also due to intensity and a little bit of it was due to, oh, we're going to call – you know, things that play into the, the defense's hands. Uh, my standouts for the day, oh, look, we gave you offensive standouts yesterday. Uh, we gave you five offensive standouts and in, in their stats. But my standouts for the day really was, well, here's my five defensive standouts. J- Jamarian Latham, uh, I thought he played very, very well at, at that end position. Now, he was up against Wilkin Formby a lot of the time, and a lot of discussion have been made about Alabama going into the uh, transfer portal for a tackle. But I thought Jamarian Latham caused a lot of, uh, created a lot of havoc and created a lot of damage along that defensive line uh, playing along that that end. Uh, Keon Sab was my number two uh, standout for the day. Keon Sab was in on a lot of plays and showed that he's got a motor and really a fearlessness that is going to be a lot of fun to watch this year. They got down on the goal line, and while Alabama ended up scoring a play or two later, it was Keon Sab who jumps in from his secondary position, works his way into the defensive backfield, or excuse me, into the offensive backfield, and gets a tackle right on the goal line. I think that uh, Alabama got a real, real steal out of the transfer portal in Keon Sab. Justin Okoronkwo is another one of my standouts. Now, he played with the twos, and it was very interesting to see how they structured. Look, it was mostly ones versus ones, twos versus twos, threes versus threes, and then four, and then kind of fours and walk-ons and jumbles kind of uh, after that. And, and, and so it was interesting to see Justin Okoronkwo play against the other twos. Now, he was playing with Jeremiah Alexander, and – the twos had the same sort of problem. Ty Simpson and who was it? Ty Simpson and Richard Young were on the other side. Ty Simpson, Richard Young, and sometimes it was Daniel Hill were on the other side, and they were getting torn up in the running game. And Ty Simpson was being able, was able to get after him with with a few passes because. The second inside linebacker with the twos, Jeremiah Alexander. We all love you from Thompson High School, right? Uh, he played defensive end, they defensive line at, at Thompson. Moved to inside linebacker last season. He looked way out of place. We talked about Justin Jefferson, and I think Justin was just a little bit underweight. And uh, I think Justin had played with good instincts uh, with the ones, but it was just a little bit underweight and maybe uh, maybe he's get his physicality up a little bit. But Jeremiah Alexander with the twos playing that second inside linebacker position really, really left a lot to be desired. Uh, and, and, and so, look. You understand a young guy uh, struggling with a position change and now a scheme change on top of that. Uh, But really, uh, Justin Okoronkwo, while he was one of my standouts, I think that your second inside linebacker position is going to be an area that uh, is going to be up for debate uh, now that the transfer portal is open. But I think Okoronkwo proved that he's got a lot of potential. People talked about Okoronkwo coming from Germany. He's an unknown and, you know, I think he's, what, 20? I think he's an old freshman, older freshman. Uh, and so that obviously helps him in his physical development, uh, but not really ever played American football uh, in America. He's played in Germany, obviously, uh, but, but but you you, you can't how, – how easy is it to translate the uh, degree of quality in German, you know, semi-pro football versus high school? You know, it, it, it's just t- tough to tell. But Okoronkwo really, really showed out for himself. 11 tackles on the day, flew around. Now you're going to just need to get more experience, more reps. But this discussion with the inside linebacker position, Jod Campbell is clearly going to be your inside linebacker too when he comes back for, from his injury. But you're going to need a third. 
You remember last year, Tresman Marshall got a lot of reps because, you know, whatever game it was, it was either Deontay Lawson or it was Jihad Campbell or some games it was Tresman Marshall. Somebody was always banged up. Somebody was a little less than 100% and couldn't go. Uh, not always, but more often than not. So you need that third linebacker position, uh, that third inside linebacker. And I don't know if you have confidence in Justin Jefferson to be a three-down guy. Uh, passing game sort of guy, yeah, sure, absolutely. Uh, I think that he's he, he's capable of doing that. But with the, with the twos, you see Justin Okoronkwo showing some of that potential at 8A with his 11 tackles. They stunned him a good bit. He got into the backfield a couple of different times and uh, made some tackles for a loss. But you look at Jeremiah Alexander and you're thinking, oh, my gosh, is inside linebacker a position that Alabama needs to go into the transfer portal and uh, and find some extra help? Or do you just say we're going to trust and see what Justin Okoronkwo has to, uh, you know, if he can develop into that third inside backer? Now, my uh, fourth standout for 8A was Damani Jackson. Now, he didn't make a whole lot of plays in the passing game. But you showed me good effort. You showed me good effort. It's a spring game, dude. Like, you don't have to. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I'm always going to poo-poo on a spring game a little bit. But but he shows good effort chasing down Jeremy Bernard and chasing down Jam Miller on two breakaways uh, and really giving the defense a chance on the goal line. Now, the defense didn't get a stop in either of those scenarios. But you got to applaud a guy who's got that never say die, who's going to give the defense another chance on the goal line. And so while it's little and while it's a spring game and while it doesn't matter, and who, yeah, those two plays really stood out to me for, for, for a good effort. And lastly, on my, on my five standouts, I'm going to pick Peyton Woodyard. Peyton Woodyard play safety, get, got in there with the twos and really played hard and, and, and filled the gap. He and Brayson Hubbard uh, filled the gaps pretty nicely with the twos. Uh, it was Peyton Woodyard who got the uh, pass breakup in the end zone to get Alabama's uh, the Alabama defense's first points of the day. I think that he's going to be a good little player for Alabama, very physical uh, and very instinctual. But it's going to be the same thing. Everybody in the defensive backfield outside of Malachi Moore needs reps uh, and needs experience. Even Keon Sapp. Keon Sapp looks like he's going to be all over the field. Uh, but he only played – what, he, he registered a year and he played a year at Michigan? I think he's, I think this is only his, going to be his second live year of college football. So you've got a lot of areas of experience that, that, that you, you – like a lot of inexperience that you got to overcome. Uh, and so while I – Really liked what you saw, but building blocks for the Alabama defense. I think that there's some places that you can improve. So let's talk about them. The college football transfer portal opened up today, and you can follow all the transfer portal news at BamaCentral.com. You can see uh, we've already got, I guess it's news, but uh, news, but it's not news to me. Caden Proctor officially returns to Alabama. Uh, he made that news uh, official today. Caden Proctor was on the sidelines at 8A, so I guess it's uh, newsworthy that he is officially coming back to Alabama with the transfer portal open. And then Alabama saw a kicker go into the portal uh, walk on kicker that's basically been the activity today uh, we talked yesterday about offensive needs and we talked about offensive line needs and kind of looking for experience there and yes Caden Proctor does meet that but you want a little bit more you probably want about two or three more guys uh, you know, one or two you probably want one or two more offensive linemen uh, to join the team but on the defensive side You've kind of alluded to it the entire program. I think you've got to go get another defensive back, another corner that has played college football. Maybe think along the lines of Trey Amos last season where, uh, where he comes to Alabama from Louisiana and you think, oh, he's not really going to – where is he going to fit over – over Terry and Arnold or over Kool-Aid McKinstry. Well, you needed him. You needed his experience because of uh, Kool-Aid had, had, had what? Uh, Terry had a head injury, uh, and then Kool-Aid missed a game. You needed him. You, you needed that extra defensive back, uh, and now Trey Amos is at Ole Miss, and you wish him well. But I think you need the extra defensive back, and maybe even two. Uh, defensive backs, guys with experience, because I like what you see in Jalen Ibakwe. I like what you see in Zay Mincy. I like what you see in Zabian Brown. Like these corners who have come in in this class are very, very highly rated, and they're highly rated for a reason, but they just, I mean, unless you want to live and die with their mistakes on the field next year, I mean, up there in Madison, Wisconsin, or back here in Bryant Denny Stadium when, when Georgia comes to town, Carson Beck, I mean, look, he can, he's going to be smart enough to take advantage of a young secondary, 
it's either going to be take it's either going to take a lot of work, and Malachi Moore is going to have to basically be daddy to all of them, uh, the second coach to all of them, keeping them all on the same page and growing them all up, <laughs> or you're going to go into the transfer portal and maybe get an, another guy that has college experience that has you know seen some live action. Uh, I'm very excited about this upcoming class, but the lack of experience gives me a lot of apprehension. And then the other spot is inside linebacker for sure. I mean. I think that the duo of the uh, the duo of De- Deontay Lawson and Jihad Campbell might be one of the best duos in the country for sure. But because they both play with such reckless abandon, I think it's almost guaranteed that somebody's going to miss a game. Now you don't want it, and you hope that it doesn't doesn't happen. But I think it's almost a shoe in because both those guys. They play at 100 miles an hour. They bring the wood pretty much every single time, and and, and, and good on them. Uh, that's what makes them fun to watch and, and, and fun to break down on film. But goodness gracious, it's a hard life to live that way. So I think you're going to have to get a, a third inside linebacker that you're confident in. And if A-Day was a sign of anything, I'm not confident in Justin Jefferson I don't know how much more weight he can put on. Uh, you know, I, I think his his speed is very, very nice for, for that position. But is he more suited at a different position? Or uh, it, it, it's hard. It's hard to even say. And then I like Justin Okoronkwo. What he saw, what he showed you instinctually. But he's still young and needs to develop a little bit, bit more uh, physically. Maybe he's your third inside linebacker. Maybe he spends the next couple of months uh, putting on another 15 pounds or so. Uh, And then Jeremiah Alexander didn't give me any sort of confidence, honestly, uh, as that third inside linebacker. And so you're looking at there and you're looking at the transfer portal. And I think that that's going to be an area that Alabama uh, really addresses. So you can let me know. Uh, what you thought about Alabama's defense? Uh, look, I thought it was very, very vanilla on the day. I thought it was set up for the offense to look good, especially early. Now, as the as the day wore on, I thought maybe they got a little bit deeper into the schematics and they called some more blitzes. And uh, I'm very excited to see what this swarm defense looks like when you have all 11 guys. You're going to get Jaheim Otis back in action. Will it be Jamarian J- J- Latham or Jaheim Otis? Who mans that spot? Uh, and, and can you get – look, do you get pressure out of Quindarius Robinson at the same rate that you did a Dallas Turner last season, that you did with Chris Braswell last season? I think that's going to be an area of you know need and concern. Uh, and if you're not – if it's not Quindarius Robinson, is it Keanu Coat? Because he got in there a, a little bit. Or do you flip Ke- Keon Keeley back over? It doesn't really seem like that is on the table for Alabama's defense. Uh, but you're going to have to get more pressure. At least you're going to have to figure out a way, figure out a way to get pressure with four. Somebody's got to become somebody's got, got to become a war daddy. Whether it's Tim Keenan, whether it's Tim Smith uh, losing his position for in favor of Jaheim Otis, maybe that's the change. Uh, but you're going to have to figure out ways to get more get pressure up front. You saw on a day they got pressure when they brought five or more uh not a whole lot of pressure when it was less than that so it's gonna be fun to see the defense continue to develop under Kane Womack uh but there but but there was a you know a little bit of building blocks all, all over the weekend that they showed you in 8A so you can let me know who you thought stood out to you at 8A what was your biggest concern for this Alabama defense and more right there in the comment section at Joe Gaither six on Facebook, Twitter, or you or Facebook, Twitter, or YouTube. Uh, we encourage you to subscribe, rate, and review the show on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or on Amazon. We're going to try to get my friend Will Miller onto the program tomorrow to talk about Alabama baseball. They just took a series win over the Arkansas Razorbacks, and we haven't talked baseball in quite some time. We haven't updated our baseball audience in quite some time, and uh, we'll see. What are they midway through the SEC season? We'll see how they're doing. Uh, but that's really going to do it for our program today. We wanted to talk about the Alabama defensive performance. I think the def- I think the coaching staff kind of uh, neutralized what they could and could have shown. I think there were some standouts, but there were some areas of concern as well for this defense. The transfer portal is open. Alabama really hasn't done anything quite yet, but you're going to pay attention to Bama Central and BamaCentral.com for all the transfer portal news. We talked about it at the end of the show yesterday that Sam Walters went in for the basketball side of things. Look, the basketball, you're going to be moving and shaking. 
We've got Alabama in on a couple of big tra uh, transfers and a couple of big recruits, uh, but really no news has happened quite yet. So we'll get out of here for the day. We'll watch the Twitter machine. You'll watch BamaCentral.com, and we will uh, cover it all again tomorrow on the Joe Gaither Show right here on Bama Central and BamaCentral.com. Thanks for joining us on today's edition of the Joe Gaither Show on Bama Central. Keep up with Joe on all his social media pages at Joe Gaither 6. Subscribe, rate, and review the show on Spotify and Apple Podcasts, and be sure to read us daily at BamaCentral.com. <laughs>